All right, so um, I just sort of realized that my talk is sort of a, a segue from kind of the end of the last one because I've created an open source, open hardware um, product, and I'm, I'm one of the things I'm interested in. in <laughs> yay! And the whole thing, although the open hardware part needs a little work because I found in uh, one of the other um, uh, the past, past talks, I've got some work on documentation to do there. But, uh, but, but, but at its core, you know, it, it, in spirit, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Um, and uh, I want to talk about, of course, what it is and, uh, and, and why I created it and try to get some interest in, uh, in, uh, in development and ideas for future development. Um, the simplest way to describe it is it's a uh, hardware uh, USB-based uh, password manager. Um, I've extended it and, and designed it so it can do you know, quite a bit more than that. But that's the uh, that's the gist of it. It looks like a you know a little flash drive, but it has this uh, illuminated button, which provides some uh, uh, interesting features, which I'll I'll get into later. Um, uh, like everyone, at one point I had some crazy scheme of memorizing a handful of passwords, and got to a point where I realized that my scheme wasn't keeping up with the threats, and I was losing track of the passwords, and so I needed something, and I knew I needed something portable. Um, you know, I run lots of computers at home, I upgrade them all the time, I'm a consultant, I switch jobs and therefore switch computers, so it had to be you know, highly portable. Um, lots of people use uh, cloud-based password management services. I'm sure most of them are designed pretty well, uh, but for myself, I couldn't quite get of the, over the irony the, of the fact that I'm wanting to manage my password so I can keep them unique and secure, because I don't trust the security of sites online. So you're, you're switching, switching from, you're moving the target and not really addressing the problem. I really wanted to know what the code was that was securing my data. And so I went online to see what kinds of, for me it had to be hardware based because anything that's in a file on a computer, I'm eventually gonna override it accidentally. I'm, I'm going, to, going to lose my data. So it has to be something I can keep with me. Um, and there was a few open hardware, open source password managers online, but um, the best one I could find, I built it for myself. It was okay. It looked kind of janky. It was hard to move it around, but the sort of censure for me is I started a, a dialogue with the developer, and he was getting a bit antisocial. He was so basically this was a project that he was done with. He wasn't maintaining it anymore. And that sort of ended up being my call to action to, to to develop Signet. Um, so it's a, you know, I call it a password manager, but it's really a encrypted database on a, on a, on a microcontroller that you, you keep with you uh, that can do you know, lots of different things. Um, there are some password managers that have a display on them and a physical interface. I decided I wanted to go with uh, graphical clients because then you get the full power of the post operating system you're using when you're using the thing. And uh, uh, you know, th those screens, uh, uh, one that's completely self-contained has some nice appeal to it, but then the, the better that interface works, the harder it is to keep with you. So it sort of, wor it sort of works against you in that way. Uh, so I, I, I decided I'd, I'd go the software route. So you, you plug this into your, into your USB port, you type in your, your master password and it's unlocked and you get a big list of all your data pops up um, and you can navigate it and, and inspect it. I'm not gonna give the full demo of that because that'll take a bit too long. Um, the uh, sort of the, what makes it convenient and not just a way of accessing your data is that the device acts as a USB keyboard. So once you've selected what you wanna type, uh, you can, then highlight a text field somewhere, and in the most common case would be the username and password fields in a, in a, in a browser, in a site you want to log into. Then you can push the, the button on the device when it, when it starts lighting up, and you're immediately logged into your, uh, the site you want to log into. Or if you wanted to access your vehicle identification number for your car that you wanted to keep track of, you can type that into some field in some website that needs it, like your insurance company or whatever, whatever it is. That you're, that you're wanting to keep around with you. Um, one of the features, it almost came about accidentally through, through the development of, of the device was what I, what I call malware or spyware resistance. Because you need to push the button to activate the typing of the, of the, of the key press, you can't do that from inside the graphical client. 
because by the time you've switched text focus all to the browser or whatever other application you want the data to type, you no longer have access to the application. So you use the button to actually trigger the typing. And I realized by extending that function to all the, op the operations of the data, deleting accounts, uh, uh, creating accounts, uh, wiping the whole database, whatever it is you needed to do, uh, that, that secured the data on the device way better than, than, uh, the, than a flash drive would. When you t plug in a flash drive into some strange computer, that, that computer has full access to, to, to whatever it is. If it's encrypted, it still gets it. It could possibly save it away and, 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 and decrypt it sometime if, if, if there's hostile software on there. But with the button, you need a physical person you know, present or, 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 or a smart robot, I suppose. Um, uh, a lot of people ask me about the implementation of, of this. Is, you know, why, is, why isn't there more encryption? Why isn't there encryption between the host application and, and the device? You know, which certainly, that would be more secure. Because then, if there was some malware there, I can still snoop on that USB traffic. And um, what I realized after thinking about that is that that would actually create a false sense of security. Because if you're, in, if you're, if you're encrypting that link, ultimately you're encrypting that link on the system that you're worried might be vulnerable, uh, or, or you know, whatever it is. There's, a, there's an encryption key setup step. At some point, that encryption key is, is probably placed in, in, and remains in RAM. And you know, we, uh, debuggers and other software have the ability to extract things from RAM from, from a compromised system. So uh, what you need to be aware of just, just anywhere, and in particular with, with, with this device, is that if you're actively using data somewhere outside your home or on a, or on a system you trust less, you have to consider that possibly that data might be gone. It might, uh, it might leave your hands. Um, in order to make this a successful product for, for myself and, and for other people, uh, I realized that it had to be really highly portable. If I wasn't bringing it with me, then I wasn't, wasn't going to be adding the data to the device, wasn't going to be securing the data, and then we'd be going back to the old ways of writing things down or using easy passwords. Um, so I went through the long and, and difficult process of getting a, a, this, this uh, uh, this case here for it, uh, injection molded, uh, which was you know, involved you know, uh, learning a whole new set of skills. Uh, it was a long process, but it, you know, it, it came out all right in the end. And actually, I'm not even in a, uh, before this project, I wasn't even very much of, uh, uh, electrically inclined. Most, most my background is primarily as an embedded software engineer. So I learned, I taught myself to use KI CAD and, and, and work with contract manufacturers in, in, in the course of just getting this done. Um, uh, uh, aside from physical portability, it had to be very portable in, in, in the software sense. It had to be able to just plug it in any system, download the, th download the client, and you're immediately you know, ready to go. Should, there can't be any extra steps. There can't be any caveats. Of a, do this special thing on one operating system versus another. It just has to be simply the matter of downloading the client and having the USB, uh, the USB device on, on uh, installed in order to get going. And uh, the way I did that, and this is, a, this is something that a lot of, um, of projects have figured out, is to, is to hijack the, really misuse the HID protocol in, in order to get data in and out of the device without needing, your application needing special permissions. You don't, or, 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 or needing to install a driver. Uh, and your HID, HID protocol, if you don't know, it's the same thing that your, your keyboards and your mice recognize as. So, you know, through that protocol, protocol, it's sending this, these command sequences uh, that allow it to just transmit any kind of data back and forth uh, from the device. Um, everything else in terms of portability was handled by uh, QT, including uh, Android support, so that could have covered all the platforms for me. Um, and I also used to work for a QT company, so uh, that was a logical choice for me. Um, uh, the other thing I realized, and I didn't, this wasn't the case earlier on in the development, was that it needed to have a really carefully designed backup system. That uh, ideally, an ideal system, you don't have backups at all. The only copy is, is on here, and then all the co all, every other time you're accessing it, it's accessed live, and then the, the data hopefully dies, and it, it, it stays uh, most of the time at rest in the device wherever you're, wherever you're taking it. Um, 
but if you if you actually take that approach, most people will start to trust, start to worry about about losing access to your accounts. Then you'll again just just like with the portability issue, start falling back on on using easy to memorize passwords, and then you've you've self circumvented the system. Uh, so the compromise was when you when you install the the application on a on a new system, it would ask you it, the, the software asks you if you if you trust the system, and if you do, it it will it will trigger automatic backups to occur every week or month or whatever. And those backups can be, you can write, read the data straight out of them, you know, even without the, even without the fob attached. Uh, or if, you get a, if you've lost the device and you get a replacement device, you, back it, you, you upload it back up and, you're, and you're, you're, you're good and going again. Um, one of the things I found out, and this is a, by the way, this was a crowd supply, um, you know, uh, 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 campaign uh, product, and one of the things I found out, in addition to from from my own brainstorming process uh, uh, with, with Signet, was that everyone has ideas of things they they want to put on this thing, either to extend it or do something completely different. And uh, I can't keep up with I can't keep up with my own ideas. I can't keep up with the ideas that everyone else has for it. And so that's sort of one of the one of the one of the main reasons I'm. I've come here is to collect your guys' ideas, get some people's interest uh, in, in, in developing features that they like to, to give the, to sort of a, a expand the, uh, the usage of, 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 of this thing. Um, so I knew that was coming, so I designed the software uh, in a way that, you know, I didn't, it wasn't hard code designed as a password manager. It was designed as a way to write soft, to, to write firmware and, and, and uh, and client software that work together over, over this HID protocol. And you can easily just stack on, just basically just stack on more and more stuff. Add a little more code on the firmware, add a little more co code, code on the client, add, and, uh, and, and yeah, it's good and working. Um, you know, along those lines, uh, it needed to be easy to, to, to upgrade the firmware so you don't have to, uh, uh, you don't have to uh, you know, open the case or know anything special. So as new stuff comes out, you just download a new file and, and update it. Um, and if you want to get in there and actually really write your own stuff from scratch, uh, you, can, you can pop this case open and, and put on a special toggle and, and, uh, and write your own from scratch firmware, and there'll be uh, more on that in the workshop. Uh, so, you know, along the lines of, of, of extensibility, here's you know, a short list of things. Uh, there, there's a lot more that, that people have talked about that I'm planning on on adding to it next. Um, one major weakness is that it does require clients. So if you want to actually type in a password for, uh, uh, you know, you know to, to log into your actual computer before, you, before you've been able to even run the client, there, I've come up with an in input scheme where you, you press a certain number of presses to indicate a, a special password slot. So password number one, hold the, hold, hold the button long, and it will just type out password number one. And those passwords are just stored unencrypted inside this thing. So that, at least within the scope of that feature, it acts like a pure hardware password manager. Uh, and that sort of will plug that gap. And that'll probably be released in a week or two. Um, second factor for authentication is uh, you know, growing in, in, in adoption. And I really kind of feel like I, I should have actually got this done, before, figured out before the campaign. Uh, but. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a real logical target for this kind of device to do second factor authentication on top of the password management. I uh, just haven't got to it yet. Uh, and that's coming around the corner. Um, another thing I really want to do, and, and other people have expressed interest, is uh, storing your GPG and other encryption private keys on here. So you could potentially have uh, various uh, private crypto keys where the only, possibly, if you choose to, the only copy of that key is, is is on, on, on the signet. So it could actually be generated on the signet, kept on the signet, and every time you need to actually perform some operation with it, like signing a document or decrypting a file, it would pass through the device to do it. Um, and so, you know, one interesting application for that is for uh, like open PGP uh, uh, email. So you could actually, you know, decrypt, you could decrypt your email while you're, your personal email while you're at work. Uh, without exposing the private key to that, that system where you're, where you're reading your email on. So that system would have your email, again, about that encapsulation question. 
this, you, ca you can't protect the email you're decrypting where you're at, but you, you're, you're, you're maintaining the protection over the private keys. Um, sort of similar along the lines of what this, uh, uh, what I'm calling the signet to signet backup. So if you don't want to keep a copy of the password database in the file format, uh, I'm, I'm planning on a feature where you could have multiple signets and simply transfer contents from one to another, um, which have a, a nice benefit of if you had uh, the secondary device, you could easily quick, quickly test it and just see that, that, that your backup is truly functional, not just a, a file that you're worried about, whether it really has, has, the, has a functioning data on it. Um, you know, to kind of compete with, uh, with all the cloud-based services, I really also want to get a, a browser plugin in there. And, and that's technically feasible. It just needs to have the Signet client running in addition to the browser plugin so that that data is quarantined inside, of the, inside the Signet client. Only when you press the button is the, actual, uh, as, is the actual private data transmitted to the browser. And that's been a security concern for many of those Cloud Password Manager browser plugins for some time. That bugs in the browser or bugs in the plugin, the proprietary plugins, could leak the uh, could leak the, the password database contents to other JavaScript or, or programs running running inside the, the browser space. Uh, signet in this form is not actually really the signet I wanted to make, but it was a signet I was able to make because I was teaching myself stuff to to get to the point where I'm at. So I'm I'm planning on a on a signet v2 for for this year, at least to start prototyping probably in a few months. Um, the, the, the big thing that, uh, that I want to get in there, that I really wanted to get into V1, is have it, have it be a full-on encrypted, encrypted flash memory stick, in addition to just being, the, being a, a, this, a, having this ability to copy data from an encrypted source on forwarding it to a keyboard, uh, which, which is useful, but people really want to be able to store lots more, obviously. Um, and so, this would also give the ability to uh, keep the client around with you. So you don't even have to, as you move from computer to computer, you don't even have to download the client. You just run it straight off that flash drive. Um, another thing, I, I'm not sure about this in terms of, of, of cost and size, but possibly a, a screen on this. Not, 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 to, not to take the place, or even start to take the place of the, of the graphical client that, go, that comes with the device, or that you can, you can run with the device, but as a way of, when you're performing that, that human validation of the command, you would actually see what it was you were validating. And that would uh, block from potential vulnerabilities uh, where there's a race condition where, where some malware is trying to send a command at the same time as you are, and you're not sure what command is, is truly being confirmed. Uh, and there's probably a lot of other neat stuff that could be done with the screen that I, that I haven't thought of. Uh, so, uh, you know, um, after I, I, I finish up here, I'm, I'm definitely interested in people's ideas for, uh, you know, what, 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 they, what they could see as a, as a Signet V2 uh, uh, for, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I ideas that they would have. Maybe it's not even related to what I'm, what I'm having here because I'm just in the prototyping stage and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm hungry for ideas. And, and of course, for, for more ideas on, on features for either, for either the current version or, or, or wherever it's going next. And, uh, all right, thank you. Any questions? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> questions? I have a question that kind of comes from a place of ignorance because I have never used a password manager. Um, I'm just, the idea of password managers to me is like it's a single point of failure and what happens if I lose yeah. that whole thing? Um, do I have to go through every single website's interface for the forgot your password and then somehow get into my email to get those back or what? So I mean, point of failure, so there's always, I think, uh, I think there's always a single point of failure. That was never not true. Before you had a password manager, the single point of failure was, was, was your ability to come up with complex passwords and keep track of which websites they're on um, and to, to, so that they aren't cracked. Um, with, 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 with a password manager, 
uh, on the cloud. This, that single point of failure is the is the the quality of the code on that on that network service. If it with an offline one, it's the quality of the of of, of, the, of the software you're running locally. With this with Signet, the single point of failure is here. Um, so uh, we're, you're always just moving that single point point of failure around. And the real question is, what are the pros and cons of of having the point of failure in different spots. So I think the issue with putting the single point of failure online, uh, it's convenient. It definitely has some convenience benefits that I'm trying to match with the design of this, but it, it's definitely a struggle, is that you're putting trust in marketing. So you, you, you know how, how convenient it is, you know how good of an experience it is, but you do, oh, go ahead, sure. Uh, but it's hard to know how well they're implementing their security. Whereas at least in the open source domain, you have a, the opportunity for auditing. Um, and, and, and that's what I think is really important. That's what I really wanted at the beginning of, of this process, is that I didn't have a system I, that I felt that I wanted to, to, to keep with me and, and to have, uh, but that I could all, also could audit it. Oh, you? Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, so Niels gets a lot of questions from me. Okay, uh, sure. But uh, you mentioned two-factor. Yes. And was the idea to just have a bunch of unique codes stored in there and you just use the next one in line or would you actually interface with your phone or something like that? Um, so I'm not sure why, why, why you're mentioning the phone. Uh, so, so my understanding is that U2F is a protocol. So, so you, the, the challenge is generated by some remote web server and it passes through to, uh, to the device and there's uh, the FIDO they, they make a USB, uh, it's a raw head interface, much like Signet already has an, a raw head interface. I simply add another raw head interface. And, and basically just, just, just follow, just, just, just shadow that, 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 that method that's already in use. So um, I might want to actually peek at what Tomu has done. I wasn't able to find it. I looked for their UTF implementation. It would be a bit different, but, 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 uh, but uh, uh, I might want to do a little friendly copying there. Um, so, yeah, the real, real question for me with U2F is that am I pushing anything else out of all the other things I want to add? When's the point where, the, where, the, where Signet 1 is saturated and, and it can't hold any new features without making the, the text slash password database too small? Because uh, there's only 256 kilobytes of storage on that thing. I it made, made it a point to keep all the, all the memory on, a, on the same chip as the, as the ARM processor as to not create an easy point for someone to just to desolder a memory chip and, 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 and grab the content. Uh, I, I also haven't used a password manager before, but it's something I've thought about a lot. Um, I like the size of that. Um, yeah, and I would, I would just say even smaller. You know, just in the, like if you're looking at adding storage and adding a screen, I don't carry around USB flash drives because they're just too big on my keychain. Like I, I need it to be like the size of one of those RFID key fobs, or smaller. Uh, yeah, whatever's better in my pocket, honestly. Whatever, whatever interfaces with the rest of my key ring best. Uh, prototypes of the design firm relating to, to, to this question. And the, uh, the, the test for me was I would get a prototype, I would stick it on my key ring, and I'd leave it in my, 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 my take it in out of my pocket for a week. And if I didn't feel like I was noticing it, then it was, then it was good enough. And uh, my, and so this, 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 this passed that test for me. Um, uh, yeah, I think I think there could be there could be a there could be like a tiny signet. It would probably have to do some. Uh, it would have to be a different a different style of case. This has a screw, which I, I left out so I could pop it open and show people. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, the, the size of this was dictated by some of the design constraints of the keyring and all that, and uh, the uh, uh, and and the re actually requests from some people to make sure to not make it too small. I actually said, some people say, I don't want to lose it. If I take this thing off and it flies off my desk, I, I don't want it to get, to get caught between the, the dust bunnies back there. So yeah, it, it's, it's, a, uh, it's hard to satisfy everyone, but I, I think uh, uh, 
an idea of a, of, a, of, a, of a tinier signet without adding these extra features is something I'll keep in mind. Uh, but there's also a ton of requests for an encrypted flash memory drive. Uh, so I think that, that's a need I'll, I'll be wanting to meet too. I'll just say, um, oh. Um, just uh, for clarification, uh, do you do you know much about Hack Five products like uh, the Wi-Fi Pineapple? Um, basically, it's a uh, it's like a wireless sniffing device of sorts for uh, like net network penetration testing. Um, and one of the things that I thought was really smart is that uh, the it has uh, LED uh, on the outside that uh, during your configuration process, uh, it has, like, the different LEDs have different blink rates that allow you to confirm that you're, uh, that you're actually interfacing with the Wi-Fi pineapple and not uh, some, like, you know, uh, like. Something else. Yeah, something else, like uh, something trying to attack you, right? And so, like, you enter in the blink rate and it checks to make sure that uh, it, confirms this is just for like the setup process. Have you thought of incorporating that into the signet? A quick answer, because we're pretty much out of time and, yeah, and have okay. to. Um, yes, I have thought about that, those sorts of things, but I, I, I've, I've, uh, I've decided that there's better ways to focus on, on those issues. Uh, one thing, at least along those lines, that, that, that I have been doing is, because I don't have a screen, different types of presses have to be used for different types of operations. So an operation that erases the entire database or downloads the entire database or does anything big like change the password requires a long press. Uh, so so you're, you're unlikely to be tricked into doing something really severe. Uh, and that's about the level I'm focused at with those sorts of problems right now. Uh, and uh, I think that's it. You can talk to me. Uh, yeah, so with the rest of your questions. Uh, Neil is elsewhere. having a workshop. Uh, oh, yes, of course. Tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow. I think, uh, uh, yeah, one to three, right? Or is it, uh, no, no, is it? Two to two. We should be right on this one. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's on, it's on, yeah I, I'm having a workshop tomorrow, and you can, I'll get, to, I'll, 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 I'll introduce you to, at the very least, be able to write your own firmware from scratch. So the, app, the application code that's on here is a bit complicated, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll get you to a point where you can just, write your blink and hello world and type with the keyboard on this and store your own data on it, et cetera, et cetera. Also, we're selling this now. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't going to say that. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs>